Keepsakes can make or break your run in Hades, but are you missing out on untapped potential? Hello there friends, it's Kodiak here, one half the team behind Legacy Gaming, and today we're diving back into Hades and breaking down everything you need to know about these powerful artifacts. Keepsakes can make or break your run in Hades, but with a little knowledge comes a lot of power. So let's not waste any more time and break down these ancient items. To get keepsakes, you need to give nectar, and various characters throughout the Hades game will give you these ancient items. Supporting characters, gods, they all have something to give, but only if you give them something first. Nectar can be obtained during your runs by going through the nectar-specific doors, or by trading with the wretched broker back at the House of Hades. I want to start with the god keepsakes because they're the most straightforward and easiest to understand. The first time you give a nectar to a god, they will give you a keepsake. That keepsake will make sure that the next time you find a boon, it's from that specific god with an increased chance of rarity. Each of the Olympian gods has a keepsake, and most of them have the same effect. When equipped, the next boon that you find will be from the god whose keepsake you have equipped, with a 10% increased chance to have a rare or better boon. The only Olympian god keepsake that's different is Hermes, Lambent Plume. Instead, Lambent Plume increases your dodge chance and move speed each time you clear a room quickly. This is one of the stronger keepsakes in the game, especially in the later parts of the game. So if you're looking for extra dodge or move speed, definitely consider picking up the Hermes keepsake sooner rather than later. Olympian keepsakes are all about control, and picking the right keepsake at the right time means getting a critical buff at the perfect moment. Remember, you can change out keepsakes between biomes, but once you select it, you're locked in for that entire section of the game. Olympian keepsakes are all about creating a build. If you're looking for something specific, having one equipped is not a bad thing, but oftentimes it's going to be more of a waste than anything else. If you're looking for something very specific, like a Zeus spoon or a Dionysus spoon that will completely transform your build, then it's the perfect time to equip Olympian keepsakes. But other than that, there are better options that we should talk about. While not an Olympian god, Chaos will also gift you a keepsake, the Cosmic Egg, which will allow you to go into Chaos Gates without losing any health, and having the Chaos Blessings have a 20% chance to be rare or better. Chaos Boons are fantastic, but most of the time you'll be able to sacrifice that little bit of health, so using this keepsake is a bit of a waste. It's not bad if you want a rare or better Chaos Boon, which are very good boons, but for the most part, there are still better options out there. Our friends Eurydice, Sisyphus, and Patroclus also give you keepsakes, and these are meant for very specific situations. Sisyphus's keepsake, the Shattered Shackle, gives your attack special and cast an extra 40% damage while not empowered by any boons. As you can imagine, this is very situational. Going into a run with zero boons is not recommended, but if you're looking for a challenge and want to try a completely off-the-rails build, this one can get the job done. Eurydice's keepsake, Evergreen Acorn, is fantastic if you're struggling with boss fights. In the final encounter in each underworld region, take zero damage the first three times a foe hits you. This is great for fights like Theseus and Hades, but remember, it's only active during the last encounter in an underworld region, which means most of the time it's not doing anything for you. The Patroclus keepsake Broken Spear Point, well this one has a little bit of staying power. After taking damage, become impervious to other damage for one second, refreshing after seven seconds. This means that you're unlikely to get hit multiple times in quick succession, which is fantastic if you're somebody that's prone to taking a lot of damage. It's not a top tier keepsake, but it definitely will get the job done if you're looking for a little defense. Moving to the top of the list here, let's talk about Lucky Tooth, which we get from Skelly. Automatically restore up to 50 life when your life total is depleted, it's only used one per escape attempt. This is basically another Death Defiance. Instead of wasting a Death Defiance, you're gonna use Lucky Tooth, and this could be good. If you don't have all of the Death Defiance unlocked, this is something that could give you a little bit more utility and a little bit more defense, ultimately leading to longer runs. The next keepsake comes from Dusa, and it's the Harpy Feather Duster. This one is great. Broken Urns has a 5% chance to contain a healing item. If you're anything like me, you're getting hit once or twice in a biome, and there's just no easy way to restore health before you get the Darkness Boon unlocked, especially if we're talking about high heat runs. 
Harpy Feather Duster completely changes that dynamic and gives you the chance to get a bit more utility out there in the biomes with healing items that can keep you going in those really tricky situations. The Orpheus Keepsake Distant Memory, which increases your damage to distant foes by 10%, is good, but it comes with a warning. Obviously, you want to be using a ranged weapon when using this keepsake or looking to use this keepsake, but that distant foes part of the tooltip is very important. Enemies that are even remotely close or mid-range to your character will not gain the additional damage from this keepsake. So remember, if you're going to go with distant memory, keep foes very far away, more than you think, and then you'll get the benefits from distant memory. The Megara Keepsake Skull Earring is another one. Decent on paper, not so much in practice. Dealing increased damage while at 30% health or less. The problem with Skull Earring is that you have no great way to control your health. If we could easily keep ourselves at 30% or around 30%, top off when we needed to, that would be one thing. But because there's no easy way for us to fluctuate our health pool, top off when we need to, this is a risky keepsake all the way. Now the next one is interesting, Chthonic Coin Purse. This comes from Hypnos, and this is pretty straightforward. Receive 125 obols to spend as you please. I was using this keepsake quite a bit going into Elysium just to get that extra bump of obols that I could spend with k -Ron. This is one of those one-hit wonder keepsakes. You only get the benefit one time per escape, so make sure if you're gonna go with the Chthonic Coin Purse that there's actually value there and that you're going to make the most out of your increased wealth. Obviously, you'll be able to buy something with the obols, but there is no pure gameplay benefit by using Chthonic Coin Purse, so really consider when you use this item and definitely not in the last biome. I love this next keepsake, the Bone Hourglass, which you can obtain from k -Ron. This will extend the effect of the Well of k -Ron items by a certain number of encounters based on the rank of the keepsake. This is fantastic if you're relying on Well of k -Ron items, which I definitely did in the early game. It's something I recommend beginning players get used to. While God Boons are nice, Well of k -Ron items are a lot more straightforward and often can result in bigger increases in your damage or defense. I definitely recommend the Bone Hourglass for beginning players, for players that are just not confident in their builds yet, because it's going to vastly improve your playthroughs almost every time. If there's one keepsake on this list you need to get and you need to get good at right now, it's the Pierced Butterfly. Easily the best item that we're going to talk about in this video. The Pierced Butterfly gives you plus 2% damage each time you clear an encounter without taking damage. Now this is obviously meant for ranged players, but you can use it to great effect with melee as well, as long as you're careful. The key is really playing smart, especially in the early biomes. Pierced Butterfly is 99% of the time the keepsake that I use right when I'm starting a run, because I know the early biomes are easy to get through and I can avoid most damage. My goal is to tap out at around 20% increased damage before I switch off this keepsake, which is very easy to do if you're comfortable with the weapons and you play carefully. Again, this is the most important keepsake that we're going to talk about in the game. You get it from Thanatos and you should equip it and rank it up right now because the benefits are unbelievable. The next keepsake, the Black Shawl, comes from Nyx and it rewards certain types of playstyles in the game. The Black Shawl increases your damage when you strike undamaged foes as well as striking foes from behind. I'll admit I'm not the best at backstabbing enemies, but this is a fantastic keepsake if you are good at it and you want that extra 20%. This is about as much damage increase as you're going to see from keepsakes, so keep that in mind, work on your backstabs, and the Black Shawl may be your go-to. The next keepsake, Myrmidon Bracers, which you get from Achilles, holds a special place in my heart. It reduces the amount of damage you take from enemy hits from the front, but increases the amount of damage you take from the back. Now, the damage reduction is much greater than the damage amplifier, which makes this one of the better defensive items in the game. The Myrmidon Bracer is responsible for my first completed run, and I highly recommend you get comfortable with it, rank it up three times, and use this on the last biome of the game. This is a go-to for me for most runs, especially when I'm fighting Hades, and something that you just have to get used to. There's no real secret to avoid getting hit from the back, just keep the enemies in front of you, and you'll see the benefits from the Myrmidon Bracer clear as day. If you're looking for a rock-solid keepsake, then consider the Old Spiked Collar from Cerberus. When maxed out at rank 3, you'll gain 50 life points to your maximum life force, and this is a great keepsake if you're a beginning player looking for a little bit more pad and trying to extend your run. There are two more keepsakes in the game, and they come from Persephone and Hades. The Persephone keepsake Palm Blossom is one of the strongest in the game. 
After completing a certain number of encounters, one of your boons will randomly gain a level. Again, this is one of the strongest keepsakes in the game as it directly influences your damage or utility potential. Now, I'm not going to ruin how exactly you get this keepsake, but it is from Persephone, so stay persistent, keep killing Hades, and eventually you'll get the Palm Blossom. The final keepsake comes from the big dog himself, Hades, and it's called the Sigil of the Dead. This keepsake transforms your call into Hades' aid, which briefly makes you invisible and preemptively fills up your god gauge a certain amount at every encounter. You can only unlock this keepsake by giving Hades nectar, which is not an option that's often available, so keep an eye out and make sure that you're always giving your nectar to Hades when presented the opportunity. Calls are some of the most powerful abilities in the game, and the added effect of making you invisible is fantastic. So consider the Sigil of the Dead if you're looking for just a little bit of oomph on your next run. And there you have it, a breakdown of all the keepsakes in Hades. If you have any questions or want to know my opinions about specific keepsakes, feel free to leave me a question in the comments section below. I also know there are incredible Hades players out there, so if you clicked on the video and you have ideas about what keepsakes new players should be using, feel free to jot that down as well. You can also join us on Discord. Our community of over 6,000 is spread across dozens of great games, so click the link below, join today, and become part of the legacy. My name is Kodiak, and on behalf of Libid and myself, thanks for watching, and play on.